I will continue. Oops, here. No, where? Okay, here. So we do, we do the Taylor series for the one one component on the right and on the left. We do it for the one two one component on the top and for the two one component on the bottom. And when you bring these things together, you see the center point stress in the difference of sigma a minus sigma b. The center point stress is the same, so it disappears in the difference here. Delta L2 times delta L3. That's making it a force. OK, we, here we have delta L1. So delta L1 is remaining. So we have delta L1 times the derivative of sigma. So this object here, the difference becomes this. And I insert this one into the top equation. OK, now for the shear stresses, I do the same without giving it in detail. I insert this object here into the top equation. And since here we have a delta L2, which was missing here, here we have a delta L1, which was missing here, all the equation will have delta L1, delta L2, delta L3, that we can remove it out of the equation, divide it out. OK, and this is just what I said before I insert it. When I insert it, what I get is remaining the and after division of the volume, what remains is the first partial derivative of sigma 1, 1, the second partial derivative of sigma 2, 1, plus the body force in the one direction. This is the force equilibrium in the one direction. The force equilibrium involves normal stresses and shear stresses, as you see here, and their derivative. And this was why somebody, some of you were asking, why do we do all this? We wanted to have the continuum equilibrium equations. The continuum equations involve stress, not force. So we had to translate force stress. And the stress field makes stress a function of position. So if we keep the cube, the stress cube small, then we are allowed to use only the first derivative, first partial derivative. And then we have the stress equation. So that was in the one direction. OK, F1 in gravitational situations will be zero. F2 or F3, depends on what you choose as the vertical direction, will be non-zero due to gravity. OK, so one of these terms can be zero. Another term could be zero. If all of the terms would be zero, then we would be sure that we are in equilibrium. But the normal stresses can be compensated by the shear stress. The force is caused by normal can be compensated by forces which are caused by shear stress. That is what this equation means. And the third direction is missing because we were not using that in the deriv derivation, but you can imagine that the sum here goes over three. Now, this is the one direction only. Make it index notation in order to replace this, the two terms, the three terms, by the sum and make it shorter, replacing the partial derivative with a comma, which I showed you in the first lecture already. So the comma j means the partial derivative in the j direction. jj means summation over all j's. Okay, this is the force stress equilibrium in the one direction. And when you do this for arbitrary directions, I don't show that, but if you, the arguments which I gave you in the one direction, you can do in the two direction. And if you are brave, you can do it in the three direction. Then the stress equilibrium looks like this. So this is the this is the basic stress equilibrium equation. Continuum mechanics is based on this. In equilibrium, if there is non-equilibrium, there will be also time derivatives, which we are not talking about today. Okay, in equilibrium, stress derivatives, partial stress derivatives, plus body forces must cancel each other to become zero. And this is a very basic mechanical, continuum mechanical thing. OK, now we, that's just stress equilibrium and we were using force equilibrium to derive it plus Taylor expansion. If you have forces, you also have torques. The sigma one two force 
is creating a torque on the cube. The sigma 1, 2 force is creating a torque with a moment arm and stress and area together make it a force. Force are the first few terms and the last term is the moment arm. Okay, this is on the right hand side. On the left hand side, sorry, uh, this is on the right hand side, this is on the left hand side, this is on the top, this is on the bottom. So we have four shear stresses on this cube acting, sketched here. And the four shear stresses create torques. And if all the torques together sum up to zero, can compensate each other, then we are in equilibrium of moments. This is what this equation here means. I will not go through it in detail like I did before for the stress equilibrium. The arguments is the same. There's only this one additional term here, which is the moment arm. Okay, and what follows from this is that actually the result is simpler, that the sum of the stresses on left and right, shear stresses on left and right, minus shear stresses on top and bottom must be zero. The Taylor expansion expressions look exactly like before. Sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 2. When I take a difference, those first term will cancel. For the four stresses, again, stress 1, 2 is now replacing y. Coordinate 1 is replacing x. Coordinate 2 is replacing x, dependent on which direction you take the derivative. Higher order terms are ignored. If the cube is small enough, then we can do that. And at the end of the day, what we get is that the sigma ij equals sigma ji, that the sigma 1, 2 equals to sigma 2, 1. So the moment equilibrium leads to the symmetry of the stress tensor. That is what this equation here means. Moment equilibrium leads to symmetry of stress. Force equilibrium leads to the equilibrium conditions, which involve the partial derivatives of stress. So that was the few word summary of what stress chapter 3.5 is about. The next lecture will talk about maximum shear stress and extreme stresses, stresses and that would be 3.6 then. Okay, end of this lecture.